I got the chance to experience one of WayPath's deep listening sessions. It was a 30 minutes uh, session. And for me, it was like medicine to my soul. It was great because I did it middle of the day. I took a break and, and I really needed that. So tell us about WayPaths and, and the, the purpose and what you guys do and what is your role? Certainly. So WavePaths is a creation of Mendel Kalin, uh, who has a PhD from Imperial College London, uh, the first PhD to focus on music and, and psychedelics. Uh, he looked at the effect of psychedelics on the music experience and also uh, the effect of music on psychedelic therapies. In his research, uh, which included neuroimaging uh, as clinical populations, healthy populations. So his insight uh, was that music is playing an incredibly powerful role. You could even look at psychedelic therapy as a kind of music therapy that enables music to do even more than it would normally. Uh, and as we were discussing, it's been used as an important setting variable uh, throughout much of the psychedelic therapy that's gone on through the ages. And that's across cultures as well. If you look at ayahuasca ceremonies, there, there's music involved and uh, look elsewhere, you'll see that drumming and music uh, plays a role in a lot of these kinds of ceremonies and, and um, we could call that those therapies. So, uh, how can we maximize the potential of this setting variable? That's really the goal of WavePaths is to say, let's get this right. Let's get the music right. So it's tailored to the individual, to the personal preferences of the individual for, for different kinds of music, to the personality factors of that individual. Uh, you know, some people may be open to a broader spectrum, spectrum of music. Some may be uh, may have preference for a narrower spectrum of, of musical styles. And basically to, to be able to respond, not just to those overall trait factors, you could say, but also to the state of the individual uh, in terms of you know, the goals of this particular session. Uh, maybe they're having multiple sessions or, or this session is aimed at uh, some kind of cathartic effect or some kind of common effect or whatever the effect that we're looking for with this session. And, and then also within the session, as it's evolving, looking at the state of the individual, biometric state, the mental state, how can we figure out what's going on in, in the mind and physiology and neurophysiology of, of uh, this person in order to select just the right music that supports that state and also supports whatever the therapeutic goal is. So this is, these are the lofty ambitions of, of wave paths. And the way that the, the system works is, is to uh, take curated uh, music that's been contributed by uh, some wonderful composers uh, that create music just for this system and tailored to this system. Uh, and then an artificial intelligence uh, puts together those elements of music uh, in real time uh, to create this continuous sound space that's evolving with uh, the experience of, of the, the person that's undergoing the, the treatment. So is this like a product that the therapist will use or is it also a product like if I wanted to use it from, from home? It, it will be for both actually. So uh, if someone wants to have uh, a therapeutic musical experience, this will be available uh, for uh, self-administering music uh, to you know, go through uh, an emotional process. So that is going to be available uh, to the public soon. Uh, and also therapists. So, uh, right now, we already have a beta product that therapists are using, and that product is basically 
something that the therapists take advantage of when they're working with their clients. So they will use the interface to deliver music, to change the music as needed over the course of a session, etc. Uh, so it's it's set up. It has the intelligence necessary to do uh, to to be useful for clinicians. Uh, but there will certainly be a version available as well for for anyone who wants to take advantage of of the music and the therapeutic potential of, of that music do you have uh, your own musicians that you guys work with to add the music or where, where does the music come from so it it, it does come from uh, professional musicians um, people like brian you know um, there, there are quite a few really interesting composers who, who have contributed uh, music uh, that are escaping my, my memory right now, but um, a lot of wonderful uh, composers that, that create these sonic landscapes. And as mentioned, they're, they're licensed just for this platform. Uh, so the music will not be heard these, these are musicians that have catalogs of music available on streaming services and, and albums and so on, but they're making the effort to create this music that's specifically intended for this therapeutic purpose within Wave Paths. Okay, and that, that was gonna be a little bit my other question is that uh, the past years, there've been a lot of apps popping up uh, offering uh, even uh, I mean I'm not going to mention names doesn't matter but there's like one that says that their their music is based on neuroscience and another one does a lot of commercial where it's like take take a 20 minutes or 30 minutes pause during the day what makes them different than to what you guys are trying to achieve um, so the difference is all of these apps and, and uh, music products may be very helpful and, and as you're well aware music therapy is very powerful for all of us we're, we're likely self-administering musical medicine uh, throughout our lives in different ways uh, whether we think about it consciously or not uh, the unique element of wave paths is this understanding that getting the music right in the context of a psychotherapy uh, or in particular psychedelic assisted therapy can make a huge difference for these kinds of therapeutic outcomes. And the system is set up to take into account variables related to the drugs involved. So uh, if you input that you're using ketamine, uh, it the system knows, well, ketamine acts in this way, it has a certain duration of effect, it has a certain um, timing for how long it takes to really peak and then how long the, the peak is and then when does the, uh, the experience start to return to normal, how long that takes. So it, it understands all of these based on the dose, uh, based on the way the dose is delivered, et cetera, and that, really enables you to, as a therapist, uh, create a session that's very specific uh, and not worry about it so much. Uh, so therapists have a lot to handle as it is. Uh, so this kind of takes one element off their plate, something they, they don't have to worry about so much. It's a, it's a tool in their tool belt that they can apply and have a lot of control over the, the course of the music as it unfolds. Uh, they can also create uh, emotional changes that are going to be oriented to the kinds of states that uh, the, the therapy is supposed to create for this individual in this session. What would be the long-term uh, purpose or, or vision? Is it that music in, in therapy, like you will take over uh, you will treat people more and more with music while you understand it and really much like try to remove drugs or are we trying to see like a combination to to make it a little stronger uh, make it more powerful and more effective 
So a little bit of both, I, I would say it's uh, definitely, it serves two purposes. One is safety. Uh, so reducing uh, problematic experiences. So creating uh, a kind of safe uh, structure in which these experiences can unfold. Uh, you know, one way you can think about music is as standing in for different systems in the brain or psyche. So with um, you know, Parkinson's disease, music kind of is like a pacemaker for the motor system. It helps smooth and movement, uh, whereas that system is not functioning uh, as normal. Music helps to create that structure there. Uh, or you know, with people with very advanced Alzheimer's, music can help activate a sense of self. It, it can stand in uh, for the self and activate these memories. And, uh, and then in this case, while where people are experiencing a loss of or a disintegra disintegration of uh, the, the sense of self, in fact, uh, in the moment, the music may provide some structure in place of that. Uh, so it kind of acts as this holding uh, structure that that provides a sense of continuity while the normal sense of I or the the, the, the singular separate entity is dissipating. Uh, so that may be that's one hypothesis about what's going on here uh, and and the way that it, it can really serve uh, to help people that are undergoing these therapies. So that's that's really where uh, you know, Way Pass is, is aiming to step in and just find the right music that, that is tailored to the individual in the moment as, as that moment is unfolding. Uh, also, uh, being that this is, uh, there, there's an artificial intelligence uh, that's built into this, it's layering this music in a continuous fashion. So whereas a lot of uh, therapies use sequences of, of tracks, let's say, uh, on you know, a, a recording device or a streaming service where there are kind of breaks, there's a beginning and end to each piece. With wave paths, it's a continuity. Um, so sometimes there's a fade to silence, but that's um, out of uh, you know, some artistic intent. Uh, but otherwise, there's this continuity of sound. And when you're moving from one emotional space to another, when you're moving between the you know, the, the, the content, you know, provided by Greg Haynes or John Hopkins or one of the other composers, uh, there's a seamless movement. Uh, so the, the system is just kind of layering things and moving to the other emotional spaces. And that's, that's also very helpful to avoid any kind of break in the experience where it's suddenly you're, you're feeling like, where's the music?